Boys and girls, we're about to watch a video on the use of electricity. Now in class, when we use electricity, we use the D-cell flashlight batteries or the large 6-volt batteries. The little D-cell batteries, they only have 1.5 volts each. So if you put two of them together, you get 3 volts. 6 volts for the one large battery, that's all we need to use to study electricity. Do not, under any circumstances, do not under any circumstances experiment or play with the electricity that comes out of your wall. There's 120 volts there and it's enough to cause you great harm or even death. So boys and girls, if you have a toaster and you're going to make some English muffins, you can plug in the toaster. You can plug in any appliance that an adult tells you is okay. But boys and girls, you cannot try to play or experiment with that electricity at all. It can cause you great harm. It can even kill you. So if you want to stay nice and safe, use the D-cell batteries that we use in class, or use one of those 6-volt batteries. Good day, boys and girls. My name is Charlie Haffey. I am an elementary science teacher for the Norwood Public Schools. The title of this video is Electrical Short Circuits. Electrical short circuits occur when you have a complete circuit, but you do not have a resistor. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Boys and girls, here we have a series circuit. I have an alligator clip wire attached from one terminal of the battery to this flaunt stock clip on the switch. The switch is open now, so the series circuit is open or incomplete. I have another alligator clip wire attached on the other side of the switch to the light bulb. The other flaunt stock clip is attached by an alligator clip back to the battery. If I close the switch, I now have a complete circuit. Electricity is allowed to go out, go through the switch, through the wires, through the light bulb, and back to the battery. And that's the definition of a complete circuit. Electricity leaves and comes back to the battery. We also have a resistor here in the light bulb because the light bulb is transforming or changing electricity into light energy. Now I'm going to open my circuit. We can have a short circuit. A short circuit is a complete circuit that has no resistor. And this can cause some serious problems. So it can happen by accident. For example, if I turn on my light and then I use this metal paper clip. If I put the metal paper clip on these two Flunstock clips, electricity coming up here has a choice. It can go through the paper clip and go around the light bulb, or it can go through the light bulb and not go through the paper clip. So let's see what happens when I do this. I'm going to take the paper clip and put it right on top of the Flonstock clips. And you notice the light bulb goes out. And the reason that the light bulb goes out is because it's easier for the electricity to go through the conductor than it is to go through the resistor. The resistor actually pushes back a little bit. Get it? Resistor. So the electricity, it's lazy it will find the easiest way to go. So if I give it an easier way to go, it's harder for it to go through the light bulb than through the conductor. And if I go like this, then the electricity is just gonna go right through the paper clip and bypass the light bulb. Now that causes a problem. The first is that our battery here can wear down really fast. The second problem is, is that it can, it can make a lot of heat. So short circuits are not good things to have at all. Sometimes, though, we make a short circuit on purpose, and the only time that we do that in class is when we use an electromagnet. And here I have an electromagnet, and right now it's just a coil of wire around the nail. If I close the circuit, the energy is going to go out of the battery, go through the switch, go through these coils of wire, and then come back to the battery. That means we're going to have a complete circuit, but because there's no resistor, we're going to have a short circuit. A short circuit is a circuit that has no resistor. Okay? So let me just turn this on for a moment. And you can't tell that it's a complete circuit because there's no buzzer buzzing, there's no light lighting, there's no motor motoring. So the electricity is going through and it is making this nail electromagnetic at this point, but I'm going to open this up because I don't want to have heat building up and I don't want to drain my battery. Now, the problem is when we do this in class 
is we want to have a short circuit just for a moment to pick up the nails. So what we do is we use one of these. And this is a momentary switch. And all you do is attach one wire here, one wire here, and you can see the switch is open. Right, right here, the switch is open. But if you push down on the switch, what happens is you close the switch, but you let go and it opens itself up. So when we use the electromagnet, we go like this. The electromagnet is active, we have a short circuit, and as soon as you let it go, the short circuit is now incomplete and we won't drain the battery and we won't have any heat building up. Well, boys and girls, that's our show on electrical short circuits. An electrical short circuit is when you have a complete circuit, but there is no resistor.